Hey, welcome back to the shop. Today, I thought that one of you guys had suggested could I talk a little bit more about my take on the engines from the early years till now and the progression that they've taken. In the early years, I mean, they built an engine that it would, unless you ran it out of oil, that thing would run for years. Even your push mowers. I mean, you couldn't kill them. And the only way you could kill them is either you didn't check the oil and it was low on oil, or once in a while a set of rings would go. So let's start off with the earlier ones. Kohler was a big one back then. And so wasn't Briggs. They had the opposed. One of the big things was they had cast iron sleeves on them. I mean, they were built tough. As we progress through the years, I think the, the mowers and snowblowers and all that became a little more efficient when it came to fuel. But I noticed that things started looking like they were getting cheapened. And when I say cheapened, they weren't built as strong. And, you know, even 15, 20 years ago, most people would have their engine rebuilt versus buying a new one. And why is that? Well, it was cheaper to build something, rebuild, you know, something that you already have had and you knew what it was than it was to go out and buy a new one. We were not at that time what I classify as a throwaway society. So you have the Depression era people still living. And they went without. You know, you hear people say how they, they've gone without nowadays. No, you didn't. I mean, they really went without. And come everything right down to food. So they never threw away anything. If they could keep it going, they kept it going. That was just built inbred into their system for having gone through it you know either as adults or kids now the parts that are in the equipment now back then a set of rings and do a complete rebuild on, a, on an engine let's say a Kohler might set you back 20, 30 bucks. But to replace the unit, it would cost you 80 to to $100. So it was cheaper to get it rebuilt. And the cast iron sleeves, you know, you never had to worry about the cylinder going bad. I mean, you just hone it up a little. And... Machines from yesterday, the older machines, they were a lot simpler than they are today. You know, there weren't a lot of parts on it. And if you had electric start, you were, but most of them were pull start, even you're riding lawnmowers. Because when I was a kid, that's how I made extra money was mowing people's yards. And the first two years, I had a push mower that I used all the time. And that's how I did the yards. So... When I graduated to my first used Montgomery Wars riding lawnmower, it was a whopping 10 horse or a 12 horse, but it was pull start. You had to lift the hood up, pull start it, get it running, and then get back on the seat and then mow. So it went from a simplistic design. It had a purpose and it served that purpose. As we come up through time it becomes more technology is used uh, try to make it more efficient to try to make it more quieter I mean today you have a 25 
horse engine that's doing the same thing that the 12-horse Kohler did in the early years. Yes, in the early years, they were loud. I mean, you could hear them coming a mile away. The, the newer ones are really quiet. They're efficient. You know, there's a lot of convenience this worked into the system on the way it, as it graduated year by year by year. So we got to look at technology. And in the early years, I mean, they were a heavy engine, where now it's aluminum die casting that they use. I see good and I see bad. I mean, it makes a lot lighter engine, more efficient, you know. But I don't see the newer machines running as long as the older ones did. Even guys that are taking care of them. I mean, you can look around today and you'll find a lot of Cub Cadets, the old ones, with a 12-horse Kohler engine in them, cast iron sleeves. You'll see still quite a few mowers out there with the Briggs opposed engine still going strong. The newer ones don't seem to hold up as, as well. And we talked about back in the earlier years, fuel was a lot cheaper. And the older machines weren't as efficient as the newer ones. But you you got to compete with a 12 horse to a 25 horse. You know, I mean, on a riding lawnmower, I don't think I've seen anything less than like a 12, might be a 15.5. Sabre came out with a 15.5, I think it was. You know, don't quote me on this stuff. I'm just shooting off the top of my head here. But most of your riders today are above an 18-horse machine. And you can go right up into, if you get into the commercial grade, you can go right up into the diesel engines, which are a lot bigger. So fuel efficiency was one thing that did come with advancement. They made a lot lighter unit. A lighter machine, improved on the fuel delivery systems on them, created it so it was more efficient, less pollutant, you know, the emissions that were coming out were less today than they were years ago. We didn't worry about it years ago. And then in your earlier models, you had the points, condenser, you know, the you file the points on it, and once in a while, the condenser would go bad. And then we gradually switched over to electronic ignition. And that was one of the older machines' downfall was the points in it. You know, if you let them sit for a little bit, they would rust up, and they wouldn't get good contact. So with the electronic that changed that was a game changer for a lot of the s small engines out there that uh, were in the lawnmowers and stuff in the riders the bigger ones the newer ones are more customer friendly or user friendly you know they they've got electric start they got the automatic choking system where you don't have to pull the choke out and play with that that's automatic everything is geared towards person just needs to get on the machine and know how to disengage the parking brake if they're using a zero turn and how to put the handles. You know, today, anybody can mow. I can teach anybody to mow a yard within five minutes. Where years ago, you might have had to play with the points. You might have had to do this. You had to pull starting it. You had to have a little bit of muscle in your... So it was geared more towards being user-friendly today than it was years ago. But I, I want to say the big changes is the emissions and pollutants. You know, I think that was probably the big push the last 20 years. And what I found was the more efficient and less pollutant, the less power it had. So the bigger engine you had to have. 
Now, what's the best engines out there to get? It's kind of like, what should I buy for a vehicle? Ford, Chevy, Dodge, it's whatever your preference is. They all have some good and they all have some bad. And I think overall that the machines have become more user-friendly and more efficient, but they're also not made to last as long. And the person that has it, they only need to know how to check the oil, add gas, and how to run the machine. Years ago, you had to be able to pull start it. You had to be able to check your points, condenser. There were more things that you as a owner had to know. But I think my take on it is a lot of stuff on the newer machines you can't fix. You have to just throw it away and get new. Rebuilding the newer engines is a little bit more tricky. They weren't made with the idea that you were going to rebuild them. I think hours per hour, I mean, the life of the machine, the life of the engine, I think the older ones last a lot longer because you have people taking better care of their units than they are today. Today, they just throw gas in it, check the oil quick, and mow the yard, and then park it. They're done. Years ago, that person that had that mower, a lot of times would have the road tiller attachment, snowblower attachment, belly mower, you know, you name it. If there was an attachment, you know, they didn't just use it for mowing the yard. They had multi-use out of their machine. And again, that 12-horse Kohler would handle a 50-inch deck and till in the garden. And some of them came with where you could put like a two-bottom plow or one-bottom plow behind them and harrows and you name it. So that's probably the other big thing that I see is if you have a zero turn, you have a zero turn. I mean, can you put a bagger on it? Yeah, but you can't put a road tiller on it. You can't put a snowblower on it. It's, it's a single-use machine now. That machine can only be used for mowing the yard. So then you got to buy a rototiller to till your garden up. And now you got to buy a snowblower to snowblow your driveway in the wintertime. So that to me is probably the biggest, is that you don't have a lot of things that you can do today that we could do years ago. So I hope that's kind of helped some of you on just my take. I know you guys that have been doing it for quite a while, if you guys can leave comments as well on the subject or what you think, the good, the bad, the ugly, you know, from back in the 60s to today. On that note, I'll catch you on the next video. Thanks so much for watching.